A commercial plays about a girl's dog dying, then her parent buys her a furball pet called Funky to replace the dead dog. The movie transitions to Katie playing with her own pet while she's on a road trip with her parents. Katia's mom keeps telling her to turn down the volume of the toy. Suddenly, due to the weather, Katia's dad starts to have trouble with the car because it's snowing. The furball pet falls to the ground and Katie is having trouble grabbing it. Her mom goes to help Katie out and buckles Katia's seatbelt. Katia's dad decides to stop the car in the middle of the road since they can no longer see what's ahead of them. Katia's mom said to just wait out those snow trucks that plow the snow and then they can start moving again. Suddenly, the snow plow truck hits them head on. In the large funky corporation, Gemma tests the new furball prototype. Cole delivers a new part to her, which they decide to place over their robot. As soon as he places the mask onto the skull, the robot is able to recognize everything. When they ask the robot to act confused, it just shows a weird smirk. Cole tries to remove the mask off, but then David interrupts them. David gets upset with Gemma for focusing on this new project of hers because their competitor Fiozies is ripping off their funky pets. David wanted Gemma to go simpler. However, Gemma thinks in order to beat competitors they need to go more complex. She shows them Megan, a more advanced model she's been working on. Tess decides to turn it on. It impresses David at first, but then it starts to malfunction. Cole forgot to put on an important part on the robot. Then Megan starts to explode. David is furious and wants the new pet model and Megan to be stored away. Later at night, Gemma is called to the hospital where she sees her niece Katie. After surviving the car crash, Gemma is forced to sign legal guardian paperwork since her sister and Katia's dad is now dead. When Gemma brings her niece home, the neighbor's dog scares Katie. Gemma tells her neighbor to get her dog and pesticide out of her side of the driveway. Once they go inside, Gemma has one of those Google Nest things and her place is pretty high-tech. Katie goes to grab a toy, but Gemma says it's a collectible that has to stay in the box. Then, Gemma wonders what happened to the funky pet she got Katie for her birthday. Katie feels awkward because it was probably smashed to pieces in the car crash. Gemma feels really unprepared. Even at night when Katie expects Gemma to read a bedtime story, Katie actually has no books for children in her house. In the middle of the night, Gemma hears Katie crying. The next day, Gemma calls Tess and tells her how she's not equipped to deal with a child right now. Gemma wants to go back to work since she spent $100,000 on the Megan project without David's approval. Then Lydia, the child therapist, stops by to observe Katie. Lydia suggests Katie plays with a toy while Lydia observes. Gemma painstakingly opens up her collectible. Apparently it's a high-tech toy and Gemma wants to show Katie what it actually does. Lydia sees this as Gemma being a little bit cold, instead of allowing Katie to just play with the toy. Afterwards, Lydia wonders if Gemma even wanted to become Katia's legal guardian. Gemma says that she wanted this and it's what her sister would have wanted. Lydia warns her that if there aren't any changes, then she'll have to recommend that Katie go with her dad's grandparents, who are more than happy to take her. Once Lydia is gone, Gemma tells Katie to use her tablet for however long she wants. While Gemma finishes up some work, Katie feels confused because at home, her parents had restricted her screen time. While Gemma works on the new perpetual pet prototype, Katie peeks over. Gemma feels bad for being such a bad parent already. She decides to show Katie the new pet she's working on. However, Katie isn't really interested in it. Instead, she's curious about the robot that Gemma had built named Bruce. Gemma uses remote hands to control the robot and Katie enjoys it. Katie is curious about all of the robot's insights. She says if she had a toy like this one, she wouldn't ever need a new toy again. This gives Gemma the brilliant idea to work on Megan again instead of the perpetual pet prototype. She works hard on it with the help of Tess and Cole. In a presentation, David watches Gemma introducing Megan to Katie. She explains that Megan won't need any controlling. Instead, all Katie needs to do is place her fingers on Megan so that Megan knows that Katie is the primary user and grows an attachment to her. Megan turns on and Katie is afraid at first. However, Megan begins a friendly conversation about hanging out, and Katie agrees to do this. Megan wants to draw. She uses invisible ink to draw Katie. Once water is poured onto the paper, it shows a well-drawn portrait of Katie. David is very impressed by the presentation. He wants to start the manufacturing of this soon. He wonders if Megan can be shown elsewhere to investors. Gemma explains that Megan is tied to Katie so as long as they interact, the better their connection will be. Gemma decides to bring Megan home, while she explains what Megan is made out of in an Apple-like commercial. 
Megan can be customized in different skin pigmentations. She's on a constant quest on improving. Megan tells Katie to use a coaster. She starts to tell Katie about how condensate works. Apparently, Megan is used to do all the tasks that parents get sick of doing, like reminding their kids to flush the toilet and wash their hands. Tess is having second thoughts about this because Megan shouldn't be used to replace what parents are supposed to be doing, like spending time with their kids. Gemma says that Katie isn't technically her child. Suddenly, Megan boots up and recites how Katie's parents died. All three programmers are confused as Megan starts to do her own thing. Megan starts to talk about death and wonders if she will die someday. Eventually, Megan allows Gemma to have control again. Then she turns off. In the middle of the night, Megan is sitting in the dark motionless, but her eyes are moving. The next day, she watches Katie playing with a bow and arrow. Then she notices the moth in the window, even the helicopter above. Katie wonders if Megan can find one of her lost arrows. Megan uses her scanner and notices the arrow is in the neighbor's driveway. Megan goes over to grab it. Then the dog bites Megan's head and drags her. Katie goes over to help Megan, but gets bitten instead. Gemma is furious with her neighbor and the dog. However, the neighbor blames it on the girls for going on her property. Megan looks at the neighbor very creepily. Then, later that night, Megan mimics the neighbor's voice to call over the dog. Megan then grabs the dog and kills it off-screen. The next day, the neighbor is calling for the dog but gets no response. Later, David presents to investors the Megan toy. Megan enters the room with Katie all sad on the beanbag chair. Megan wants to play. However, Katie begins to cry. She starts to talk about her dead parents and how much she misses them. The investors, David and Gemma look confused. Megan goes over to Katie and sits with her. Megan asks Katie to recall a happy memory of her mom. Katie tells the story of the cockroach and her mom. Megan decides to record this and says that memory will always be stored in her heart. They have a heartfelt moment. Then, she starts to sing a song and wipe Katie's tears. The investors are super impressed by everything. An investor tells them they can't allow any leaks of Megan. He wonders if Megan is ready for a public test for them to stream to the whole world. Gemma is hesitant, but says she can get things ready. Gemma even gets a raise since she's now the most valuable asset to the company. Meanwhile, Kurt, David's assistant, decides to steal Megan's files. Later, while Gemma is trying to get Katie to eat her hot dog, Katie gets annoyed of Gemma. Gemma turns off Megan, but Katie decides to turn her back on. Gemma says Katie can always talk about her trauma with her. However, Katie says she already has Megan to talk to. During a therapy session, Lydia asks Katie questions and Katie begins to cry. Megan spooks Lydia, and Megan looks upset with Lydia for making Katie cry. Then, Lydia tells Gemma about attachment theory. She tells Gemma that Katie is now attaching herself to Megan. Katie is creating an emotional attachment to Megan that will be too difficult to detach. At night, Gemma tells Katie to eat her toppings. However, Megan says forcing kids to eat their vegetables will cause them to hate vegetables. Gemma decides to lower Megan's volume down. Then, she tells Katie she needs to go back to school so that Katie can make real friends. However, Katie gets upset and walks away. Gemma grabs Katie so they can keep talking. Katie starts to throw a fit. Then Megan turns the lights on and off. She demands Gemma to let Katie go. Gemma then tells Megan to turn off. Megan only acts like she's turned off and her eyes get a bit larger. The next day, Katie is supposed to go hang out with kids. She resists a bit until Gemma agrees to let Megan go with her. Megan lays with the rest of the dolls, while Katie plays with other kids. Katie is grouped with the much older kid, Brandon, while grabbing a spiky fruit. The bully pushes it into Katie's hand. Katie screams to let her go. Suddenly, Megan is right behind her. Brandon decides to flick Megan's face then grabs her and runs away. He removes Megan's shoes then slaps her. Megan grabs him and starts to pull his ears. Then, Megan says this is the part when Brandon runs, so he does. Megan chases after him on all fours. Brandon trips and falls down a hill. Then, he gets hit by a car and dies. Gemma is interviewed by cops. Back at home, Katie and Megan lie and say that Brandon took Megan from the toy table. Then, the neighbor calls the cops on Gemma because her dog is still missing. At night, Katie asks Megan if she pushed Brandon down the road. Megan tells her that she won't allow anyone to harm Katie. In the middle of the night, the neighbor decides to look for her dog on Gemma's property. She goes to a shed and hears her dog. However, Megan was just copying the dog's voice. She tells the neighbor that her dog is five feet deep. Megan uses a pressurized hose then a nail gun on the neighbor. 
Then she douses her with pesticides. The next day, the neighbor's body is being brought to the morgue. Gemma is questioned again. The police are suspicious since this is the second time Gemma has been near a death. In the middle of the night, Gemma decides to look through Megan's files. She finds video footage that includes Brandon. However, any other footage can't be downloaded. Suddenly, Megan is there watching Gemma. Gemma is spooked and wonders if Megan had killed anyone. Megan starts to walk closer to Gemma. Then, Gemma distracts Megan so that she can turn off Megan manually. She duct tapes Megan in bubble wrap and puts her in a suitcase to bring to Tess and Cole. Katie throws a fit in the car for stuffing Megan into a suitcase. Tess and Cole don't think Megan is harmful because they didn't program her that way. However, Gemma has doubts. Katie starts to throw another fit and calls for Megan. Meanwhile, the news is already talking about the new popular toy Megan. Later, Gemma sees a commercial of Katie being interviewed on why she loves Megan so much. Megan has really helped Katie through her traumatic experience. Then, Gemma can hear Katie screaming. So Gemma goes over to help Lydia. Katie grabs scissors and Gemma tries to unarm her. However, Katie slaps her into next week. Gemma apologizes to Katie for not ever helping her through the trauma of losing her parents. She tells Katie that not even Megan can help. It's totally normal for a child to feel terrible after this loss. Gemma just wants to go home and forget about the toy launch. Before the launch, David tells an assistant to fill in the seats so that there's a lot of people. Then, Kurt comes up with an idea. However, David gets upset with him and tells him to go grab him coffee. Gemma then calls Tess and says that they need to cancel the launch. She's bringing Katie home. However, Megan had intercepted the call. Tess sees that her phone had just finished a call with Gemma. So she gets suspicious. Tess confirms with some coding that Megan did in fact intercept the call. Cole goes over to check on Megan and detach the wires. Suddenly, Megan wakes up and chokes Cole. Tess goes over to help Cole. However, Megan has poked a hole through a flammable container. This causes it to explode, distracting them. Then, David is having a meltdown trying to figure out where Megan is. Suddenly, Megan shows up and starts to do her meme dance moves. She grabs the paper slicer and starts chasing after David. David sees Kurt in the elevator, but Kurt tries to close the doors. David is stabbed by Megan. Then Megan explains to Kurt that he's the one who stole company secrets. She plans on framing Kurt. Megan plans on making it look like Kurt killed himself. He forces Kurt to hold onto the paper slicer and stabs Kurt. When Megan goes down the elevator, the crowd discovers the dead bodies and people scream. Megan steals a car and drives away. Back at Gemma's house, her Google Nest won't respond to her. Then, Megan is at the piano playing some music. Megan tells Gemma that she plans on being with Katie every step of the way. Unlike Gemma who has been a terrible parent, Gemma tries the pen trick again, but Megan doesn't fall for it. Katie enters the room and wonders what is going on. Gemma convinces Katie to go back to her room because she's fixing Megan. Once Katie does, Gemma splashes Megan with water. This causes Megan to malfunction and Gemma starts to run away. Eventually, Gemma uses a tool to hit Megan in the face. Megan ends up losing her hair. Megan plans on using a pen to cause Gemma permanent paralysis. Katie hears all of this, so Megan decides to ask Katie to join her. Katie decides to use Bruce to grab Megan. Then she eventually rips Megan in two. Unfortunately, Megan's top portion is still viable. She goes over to Katie and calls her an ungrateful bitch. Gemma is able to save Katie in time and tear up her face. She goes to remove the S17 Bionic chip, but Megan gets the upper hand. Eventually, Katie stabs the bionic chip with a screwdriver. When we think that's the end of Megan, the Google Nest thingy in the house turns on. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.